honestly is like, why does it take going to paternity court, taking a DNA test just to like get it? Like you should believe me when I tell you, not somebody else that's not in our picture. Did like, you know he was married? No, he didn't hey, tell me that. Then how often would he come over after that? Every day. He was spending the night every day? Yes, ma'am, sleeping in my bed. We was together one time, and I hate to be crude, but it was a one-night stand. I don't care what your version was. I was far well, from a one-night one stand. Dating, living across the street from each other? Far if I was your wife, I All wouldn't right. trust you for nothing. All sorts of unbelievable events happen on paternity court, but fasten your seatbelts for this one, folks. The Sowers couple was against Ms. Rotten, who claimed that Mr. Sowers had fathered her five-month-old son. Well, you don't get to watch a wife against the mistress every day. Adam have been married for 14 years. She has tried to destroy my marriage. She's tried to put this baby off on Adam, saying it's his baby. She's tried to file child support papers, which I have right here. That you asked for. And you know, the strange thing about it is in Horry County. Isn't that something? It's Horry County. Horry County. If you could read, you'd know it was Horry County. Oh boy, the tension in this case was so thick that we can cut it with scissors. According to Ms. Roten, our Mr. Potential Daddy sweet-talked her into a causal thing. But wait, how did Ms. Sowers find out about this? Because honestly, isn't that unusual? She's on her husband's side. I had a friend uh, up the road that says, your husband is at a girl named Chrissy's house. And I'm like, where is that? And she gave me the location and his car was there. So that gives you the right to come in my front door? Well, I knocked on the door, did they not. didn't answer. And I walked in and the first time I called them, they were on the couch. What? Ms. Sowers did catch them on the couch, mid action. And yet she decides to go against the mistress. I wonder what magic spell from the Harry Potter Mr. Sowers has done on Ms. Sowers. But wait, Ms. Roten has a few more confessions to make. At this point, did you know he was married? No. Yes. So your mutual friend just basically comes and says, He didn't hey, tell me that. He never tells you this guy's married? No. Then how often would he come over after that? Every day. He was spending the night every day? Yes, ma'am sleeping in my bed. How can Ms. Sowers turn a blind eye to all of this? Listen up or wake up. Your husband has been cheating on you. Ms. Sowers. However, she also explains about the erratic behavior of her husband and Ms. Roten helps her connect the dots. Missing a lot and I wonder where he was. With me? Yeah. And he was Making at her bed. house. Oh, so he was missing all night? He would admit he would go, he'd leave at certain times of night and I'd wake up and he wasn't there. He'd show up at my house three o'clock in the morning. So Oh, yeah, he would I show up at your house at 3 a.m.? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all, all times of night. Just come in and get in bed with me. When questioned about it, Mr. Sowers revealed that his marital relationship was facing significant challenges. On the contrary, according to Ms. Roten, he expressed enthusiasm about her pregnancy. Allow me to remind you, sir, that you are not a bachelor. But wait, how did Ms. Sowers find out about the pregnancy? I open the door, and he's on one side of the bed, she's on the other, but he's dressed. I'm looking at her, she's in a little tank top. I'm like, are you pregnant? She's like, yes, I'm pregnant. That's and not how that's it happened. Adam's child. And I said, is, is that true, that's not Adam? How it happened. I said, is that true? True Adam, he says, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Now, let's delve into the heart of the matter. Do you want to understand why Ms. Sowers is siding with her husband when she confronted him about the mistress's pregnancy and the possibility of the child being his? His response was nothing short of a denial. He expressed uncertainty, saying, I'm not sure, just wow. He didn't, Did he didn't, he didn't deny and he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, you know, either way, because there were other men uh, involved in this situation. That's a lie. There were other men That's a lie. that she had been sleeping with. Seven That's a total lie. to to be. Seven. I've been with eight Seven. people my entire life, baby. Oh uh, man, Ms. Sowers, you did sound confident here on this one, but this paternity question can only be solved with evidence. And you know who has it here? That's right, Judge Loran Lake. So here are the much awaited DNA results. Mr. Sowers, you are the father. Thank you, have a nice life. That is your little boy. It sure is. And it the is. poll was incorrect. Adam will. <laughs> yeah. All right, paternity peeps. We meet Mr. Manser, who claims he spent five years behind bars for not coughing up child support for Ms. Sayre's son, Dylan. And guess what? No one even proved he's the biological daddy. What? 12 hours of my life cost me five years in the Department of Corrections. She was a friend of my aunt's. Uh, she was best friends with my aunt. We all lived in the same little community. She lived across the street. I knew of her. I knew her. I've spoken to her. But as far as intimacy, we was together one time, and I hate to be crude, but it was a one-night stand. I don't care what your version was. I was far well, from a one-night one stand. Living across the street from each other? Far from a one-night well, stand. Be upset all right, I live all right. the Mr. Manser spills the tea about his one-night stand with Ms. Sayre, but surprise, surprise, she's not buying it. Fast forward to court, Mr. Manser misses the memo, doesn't show up, and boom, he's named the dad by default. Classic. So how did 
did you get arrested? That came three years later after I still didn't pay child support, still unable to pay. I still had doubt. I've never to this day, thank God for your show, or I'd never know for sure whether or not I was the natural father. Never. If you would have showed up for court, you would have known. I didn't. I couldn't show up for court. Why? There's so a lot of people. I, 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 I got there. Would well, you live in the same town? The dude's still doubting the whole fatherhood gig, questioning if he's the real deal. And here's the kicker. He claims he never saw any proof that Dylan is his spawn. There might be an interesting twist to all this. When Miss Sayre presented the court with some evidence. Because I have had a DNA test done and I have the results right here. Would you like a copy nice of it? Well, she's worked for Lab pretty much for the last 20 years. Those were, I, I Hold question on. the validity of the, the results. I mean, she can get those anyway. Hold on one second. Jerome, please hand me Miss Sears' evidence. Oh, and it also right. shows the lab did, that the, the, got, the seal was not tampered with, therefore you, I could not have tampered with the sample. I never submitted a test. All right, so the lady has been working at the DNA testing lab. And according to Mr. Manser, the test results might have been forged. Well, there's only one way to find out. How about we let Judge Lake do some investigation? The information that is also included in the collection of the samples, I do see that for alleged father, it's entirely blank. That's right. Meaning um, imagine that. there is no social security number. That's right. There is no address. She forgot to put no that part in there. There is no information about you. It's all blank. Talk about calling it unbelievable. Miss Sayre, your entire claim about the lab results being legit now sounds kind of shady. We must say, but wait, our emotions might run high when everything comes to this. There's no evidence that you were there That's on that exactly day. Right. Thank We've you, established that. Thank you. We do, however, see a lab record of a collection taken on May the 1st, 1995, which they claim was you. The date of May when they put on there underneath the Ascension number, that is when they pulled a sample see, out of the freezer. Emotions run high as Mr. Manser's son, Chris, steps in, dropping truth bombs about their father-son bromance. But wait for it, Dylan. The supposed love child just got left alone. And how about after all this, we just clear the doubt for everyone? So here, Judge Lake reading out the test results. Mr. Manser, you are not oh, God. his not? father. Oh, man. Five years in prison. I, Dylan, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, this is why. This is why I did what I did. But this is acted. nothing I made up. The lab did You it. made it all oh, up. No, I did not. Well, those results oh. apparently I don't know any up. of those people on that form. But soon after the results were revealed, there was another plot twist that had been waiting for everyone in the shadows. While Mr. Manser was understandably furious, Ms. Sayre drops another bomb, and you just would not believe what to say. She should be convicted of some crime. No, I should not. I didn't. That Mr. Manser. Mr. Manser. Mr. Manser. That is fraud. I know you're upset. <sighs> I know I it's you. overwhelming. I need a moment with Dylan because I want to make sure he understands. Do you want to find out who your father is? Of course. Miss Sear, do you know? Yes, ma'am. Here's another moment you wouldn't believe. The latest scoop is quite the roller coaster. Reality TV star Kaylee Woodbury was on a mission to secure the ultimate paternity award, not for a mystery man, but for her fiance. Tabloids, you're in for a treat. I mean, I know 110% that Daquan is the father of my child. I don't sleep with no one. I don't look at nobody. I don't have feelings for no one else but this man. You know, there's always gonna be people in his ear, no matter where we go, just because I do have that reality star TV persona and it could be not even denying our son or anything. No matter what I do with my life, someone has an opinion. It's the classic superstar dilemma, isn't it? Rumors falling like confetti on their parade. Mr. Cage, the pint-sized champion, spilled his heart out in court, achieving a world record for embracing coziness at the speed of light. Did you use protection? No. Oh, y'all are doing the most. <laughs> yeah. So we start off irresponsible. Yeah. Yes. Have you decided your boyfriend and girlfriend now? I mean, what not is Not right this? away. No, not right away. We were still just like, like hanging out. I mean, like, people were always telling me they were just like, even some of her co-stars, they were just like, hey, listen, don't trust Kaylee. She's out there. And they, I say birds of a feather flock together. In case you thought that was too much, brace yourself. Mr. Cage, the Sherlock of Celebville, has cracked the superstar code and even obtained a crystal ball for her playbook. Let's hit warp speed and zoom into the baby bump saga. You knew we were headed here. Uh, I told her she was lying. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you're lying. She was like, no, I'm not. I'll go get another one. And I was like, go get another one. She got another one. It was positive. And I mean, like, I was happy but scared at the same time. When does the doubt just Four set in, in and you go, is this my baby? So the doubt started kicking in. Three months in. 
yeah, around three months in. The baby daddy wasn't comfortable with the plaintiff spending time with another guy, and the entire situation screamed doubt. It's like a puzzle piece falling into place, right? The defendant had a significant question mark looming over his head. You were saying all the right things, but you were feeling something different. Of course. I'm just you just... really weren't living your best life. You was living your best lie. Yeah. Right? And Miss Woodbury, what 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 it seems like to me is this public persona was affecting your relationship. Very much so. And then especially when it's my child, like our, our child. Get ready for the spectacle. Doubt is in the driver's seat. And guess who's riding shotgun? Judge Jake with a PhD in raising eyebrows. This TV star is in for an eyebrow raising lesson, folks. It's time to take notes. There are certain lyrics yeah. in this courtroom that are familiar. When you start singing a song about and C says he's got dimples and he's got dimples. He's got an eye and he's got an eye. <laughs> he, I mean, right? right? He liked eggs and he likes eggs. Like that, when that song starts to play, what it tells me is there is doubt. Here's a twist that even roller coasters envy. A not so famous ex-boyfriend had a who's your daddy moment, insisting the mini human resembles another guy. The baby mama, like a boss, turned into a professional denier, shutting down that theory with finesse. I feel like there's there's certain features. Where? I feel like Where? There's certain features. He looks n he okay, one, he's so much darker than you. And it no. It don't matter. You're No, no. Like just no. He looks I don't have the same 110% <laughs> nothing like the other men. The other man. Looks well, nothing like him. Miss Woodbury, I gotta say, in this courtroom, that's defunct testimony. <laughs> because it doesn't mean anything. After plenty of he said, she said, our court queen, Judge Lake, steps in for the grand revelation. The anticipation was palpable. The DNA showdown unfolded with what felt like a closure sticker or something along those lines. Mr. Cage, you are the father. Yes. You all have what I call a resume relationship. I've been in one of those. Ms. MacArthur brought her boyfriend to a family reunion, seeking a second opinion, but the event took a wild turn. The family dropped a bombshell. Her boyfriend might be her blood brother. The revelation added an unexpected and dramatic layer to the gathering, leaving everyone astonished. My mom and my, my other aunts was there and they was looking at me funny in the face. And she pulled me to the side. She was like, I'm not gonna look at you funny in the face. That might be your brother. And whatever y'all got going on, y'all need to cut it out until you find out. You said they were looking at you funny in your face, meaning you knew as soon as you walked in, they were giving Some, you yeah, a side eye. Right. Something wasn't right. Right. Hold on to your hats, folks. The craziness doesn't stop there. Brace yourselves for this twist. Ms. MacArthur is expecting a baby with Mr. Veals. Yes, you heard it correctly. An unexpected and awkward situation that no one saw coming. This is making you very emotional, and I can understand why. I can't imagine dating a young man and finding out that it possibly be my brother. Is your emotion because you're hurt? Do you feel fearful? Are you scared? I feel all of, I feel all of it. What is it? I feel disgusted. Curious about the details? According to the defendant, a chance encounter with some cousins at the family reunion triggered an unexpected realization, setting off alarms in his mind. It's a situation he certainly wasn't anticipating. So, because I didn't know that he knew any of the family members, I didn't. I was thinking that he probably met them through our friend that we have in common. Like, and so, wait a minute, Mr. Veals. So this, you never knew your ever. father. Last time I seen my father, I was around four years old. So I never really had like, you know what I'm saying, a relationship with him. Like I never really conversed with him like that. Like I, he just really wasn't in my life like that, so. Intriguingly, both the plaintiff and the defendant acknowledged their father's fast paced lifestyle, speculating that he might've been traversing states, fathering children with different women. Their identical testimonies about the elusive big daddy only deepened the uncertainty. Like when I, when I was younger, I actually felt like I would run into some type of situation like this because I know my father just was always, you know what I'm saying, a reckless man, honestly, you know what I'm saying? He was he was driving trucks and he was just in hotels, you know what I'm saying, spending money on different women, so. Um, my mother and my father was married. He was always there with me and my brothers except for when he was on the road because he was a truck driver. Adding the cherry on top, Ms. MacArthur testified about a picture mystery she stumbled upon. Everything became eerily apparent. There was a striking resemblance between Mr. Veal and Ms. MacArthur's father, unveiling a compelling piece of evidence. 
evidence. Mr. Veal's mom sent it. I guess sent that picture to your aunt. The picture when he was a little boy. Yeah, for my to dad. To your aunt. And she had it in the book the whole time, but I never knew they called him Jay. I didn't know it was Jeremiah. Did they say this little boy was your father's child or might be? It might be like a possibility. Ever heard someone say, "Feels like I've known you almost all my life"? This might be exactly what they meant. With both the plaintiff and the defendant admitting they've never met before, DNA results are the key to unraveling this mysterious connection. When it comes to the DNA result for Katrina McArthur and Jeremiah Veal, you are not brother and sister. That's a new one. What a relief. Mr. Veal, it's a thumbs up for you. Time to start planning that wedding. This entire thing could have been one big disaster if things didn't favor you both right. However, this might be one of the most unbelievable moments. It's the ball on the you, you feel free to stand over with your girlfriend. <laughs> Get ready for another Who's the Daddy showdown. While money fraud is common, Mr. Jackson has taken it up a notch, petitioning the court for a DNA test. He believes Ms. Island committed paternity fraud by falsely claiming he fathered her two-year-old daughter. Because, you know, I found out about this child a whole year ago, a year ago. And so what does that have to do with a paternity fraud? Because if this was my child, I want to be in my child life. You supposed to let somebody know. Aaliyah picked up and took off. Never heard from her, she stopped playing Facebook games. Sending me messages through Facebook, yeah. then she would block me. Mm. So the baby mama just disappeared after the baby was born and showed up years later claiming Mr. Jackson to be the baby daddy. Were we all teenagers here with a child in the mix? Anyway, Mr. Jackson, let's rewind to the nature of your, shall we say, situationship. Um, I was at work, I was leaving, I got off work. She was next door from my job as a public aid office place and she was coming out of there. And I said, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? Let me talk to you, get your number, whatever. She said, sure. Wrote the number down. I said, where you headed to? She said, I'm going home. I said, okay, the bus stop is that way. Let me walk you to the bus stop. I walked Aaliyah to the bus stop. She gave me the number. Right after that, I called her. She answered the phone. That night, me and Leah had sex on the back porch. Oh, come on. You can't lay all the blame on the woman, even if it happened on the porch the day you met Mr. Jackson. You're equally in the mix. You can't just play the Black Ranger from the Wild Force, LOL. But here's the kicker. It was all happening without commitments. It was just sex-wise. Every time he called my phone, it's sex-wise. And you all say you were in a relationship, Mr. Relationship Jackson. We wasn't in no relationship. We had no, we had no you. strings attached and Yana. it's just sex in a car. She's a jump off. No She's reason, a jump no off. I'm a easy, jump off. Wait a minute. Easy, I'm a jump easy, off, but you can come with the order. Let's get, some order. Let's get some order. No. Listen. Someone had to say it out loud and knock some sense into these kids having kids. After Mr. Jackson repeated the porch incident, just look at how Ms. Island reacted again. It felt like she was hiding something under her sleeves. It's just him. That him and he and him, me and him. That it was just him. I was just was messing around with him. Else. But you stay calling my phone, else. calling Leah, me. Who explain the guy on the back porch? Who's that guy on the back porch? Wait, I thought you was on, on the back, back porch. porch. Oh my God! Yeah, Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. It was two guys, wow, wow, wow. Was two guys <laughs> on the back porch. Me and the mystery man. Time I was oh, on the back porch. Wow. The guy was no. Real me. Feels like Mr. Jackson's just jealous. Nothing else, right? Oh boy. If you think he's that simple, you've got it all wrong. According to him, Ms. Island was already in a relationship and went MIA during their relationship. When did she disappear? I don't understand this part. Um, I started coming over there, blowing the horn. Her family come to the window. She's not here. She's gone. Okay, I'll leave. Come back the next day. Come to the house, blow again. Bye bye, Lee up there. Now, she gone. Look, she on the side of the window, moving the carriage, looking. I'm that she go right there. She yeah, out. Cause I don't want to be bothered with you. When faced with overwhelming confusion, let's turn our attention to the timeline. How about we dig deep into that and unravel the complexity by doing some calculations? Ms. Island, could you please share your perspective on the timeline? November 15, 2015, I found that I was pregnant. How did I know? Because I missed my menstrual period. When I went to the hospital, it confirmed that I was pregnant. I called him and told him he was excited. He come see me that night. The same day, November 15th, he came to see me. We were sitting in the car. I was talking to him. I mentioned something about I'm hungry. She said, okay, he'll be back. Here it is, 30 minutes passed by, he never came. An hour passed by. He never can. Disregard that for now. Let's refocus on the case. I believe most aspects are now clarified. How about we cease recording the testimony and provide you, Mr. Jackson, with the closure you rightfully deserve? Here are the DNA results. When it comes to two-year-old Jemiah Eland, Mr. Jackson, you are the father. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Woo! <laughs> you are the father. That's your beautiful little girl. <laughs> caught up in a scam and ended up in a paternity web. Mr. William had brought Ms. Annette to court, accusing her of con-tricked him into paying child support for her 22-year-old daughter. Meanwhile, Ms. Smith asserted that Mr. Eli is the father of her baby girl. Mr. Williams, you have brought Ms. Annette Smith to court today, claiming she scammed you into paying child support on her 22-year-old daughter, Clarissa. You say you use condoms at all times, so you cannot be Clarissa's father. Yes, Your Honor. So the trial begins with the potential father. When Judge Lauren asked him about on which basis he is accusing the defendant of scamming, he asserted that child support is the forge to him, as he is not the father, and was even unaware of the pregnancy. So, Mr. Williams, why do you believe Ms. Smith has been scamming you all these years? The scam is the child support. You, 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 you file child support against me when I don't have, you don't have proof. I have never signed a birth certificate. I've never been pro uh, proven that I was the father of the child. Were you, were you having a sexual relationship with Ms. Smith during the time the child was conceived? I don't know. Even though it was obvious that no one could be scammed into this kind of huge mess without being related, Mr. William did his best to prove that he is an innocent man who has done nothing wrong. In fact, child support has left him devastated. Big! I mean, I'm, I'm been, I've been held to not being able to get to my fullest ability to make a lot of outstanding money. When I met Eli, he never had a job. That's what I paid thinks. for everything. That's what, no, that's not true. Eli had money when he got into a oh, car accident. Oh my goodness, that's not true. We had a relationship. That's not true. Okay, so the woman stated that they were in a committed relationship and there was no other guy other than him in her life. Uh huh. Mommy played an active role and confidently made him aware of her pregnancy, but her supposed father consistently reacted like he had lost his memory of M.S. Smith's part. You say this was a real relationship. Yes, ma'am, it was. There you go, right there. You all were boyfriend and girlfriend? Yes. No. At the point that you realized you were pregnant, before that, were you sleeping with anybody else besides Mr. Williams? No. When you found out you were pregnant, did you tell him? Yes, ma'am, I did. However, he was acting like a compulsive liar, but looks like his words were not even helping him anymore. As it turned out that he had an opportunity to get a DNA test, but instead of clearing this mishmash, he went ghosted. He never showed up, but he came down here plenty of times after that. You when I was on Plumbing Assistant, Where they asked from? Eli to come to, down here for the blood test. Eli declined. He didn't want no. to show up. When? You when? remember. No, I don't. When they put you on child no, support and you get AFD, no, 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 no. they ask you for now, the I'm blood test, you, I, and he didn't no. want to do it. That's not true. As we know that the plaintiff's testimony was quite shady and confusing, because to save himself, he was playing a defensive show. But what he testifies next is just off limits and nasty and will surely sweep you off your feet. Why would anyone do this kind of cheap thing? Me going back to Florida was not in my plan. Because my thing is, what you used to do with my condoms when you used to do with We them? never used, you used no condoms, Eli. What did you used to do with them? Oh my Tell God. Them, what you, oh, See, you this is I'll you tell never, you. you, you, you Why are you condom. doing you this? You never use condoms. Never. So, Mr. Williams, you say you always use condoms. As far as I know, always use condoms. Huh. That's being to toot one's own horn. If you were responsible, Mr. William, then you would not have waited for 22 years to find the truth. So, the potential father explained the dumb reasons that made him uncertain about him and fathered the young girl, Clarissa. I'm one of them people that I won't take care of my responsibility if I think I'm responsible for it. But when I find out that mm. in I'm not responsible when it's definitely somebody else involved, it's somebody else involved. I don't think the child looks like me. I don't think she has my characteristics. The both plaintiff's and defendant's testimony was not helping the judge to understand this battle, so she summoned Clarissa, and she testified that the daddy has been the true definition of a deadbeat dad. Is Mr. Williams the person you were always told was your biological father? Yes. You never were told anyone else could be your father? No. Do you remember him being in your life when you were growing up? When I was five, he called me. That's all I remember. Nevertheless, the young girl told the court that his alleged dad has missed out on so many things and she wanted to have a father figure and fatherly bond in her life but he didn't bother to be there for her or to be in contact with her you missed out on my entire life I wanted to have a father to brag things about in my academic life I wanted to explore if to, just to have fun with a dad right beside me all the time someone to support me you were never there I wish you were we could have had some fun but no you weren't never there you stopped calling me hmm this this star girl has missed the best and foremost part of her life due to Mr. Williams' doubt and negligence of knowing the truth. As their back and forth squabble was not helping and the plaintiff's crazy acting was sparking more turmoil in this conflict, and the only way for resolution was to spot the results hiding in the envelope. Mr. Williams, you are her father. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs>
Well, I'm so happy for you. Mr. Williams, Yes. how does it feel to finally know for sure? Feels better than not knowing. This was, in fact, your biological child all along. That whatever this notion is you put in your head. Never let your innocence be the chance for somebody to swindle you, or it may lead you into the fatherhood predicament. Mr. Taylor dragged Ms. Jackson in front of Judge Lauren to settle down the heated mess. He claimed that the defendant had made him a buffoon, as she was pregnant with someone else's baby, and he was unaware till nine months. Mr. Mr. Taylor, you say your fiance, Ms. Jackson, dropped a bombshell on you when she was nine months pregnant and told you that you may not be her child's father. Yes, Sean. She later changed her mind and said, you are Raymond's father. Yes, Sean. The testimony commenced on this note. The alleged baby mama testified that the stakes are high because their relationship is on the verge of breaking. And if today's results proved that he is not the father, then everything between him and his girlfriend will be over for good. So, Mr. Taylor, what is riding on today's results? Well, this relationship. I just, I've, I've been I've been through too much. I, I've done too much for the kid. I've been there since day one, raising this kid, fathering the kid, clothing the kid. I do everything for this child. When Judge Lake asked her how did she feel about cheating on his fiance, it turned out that he got ghosted and left her and the kids stranded in the shelter without even informing them about anything. Then why is he creating drama over being deceived when he abandoned his family? In the relationship that drove you to do that? A few years ago, we just packed up and we moved to Florida for a fresh start. And I met Mr. Green in a shelter and we, we ended up becoming intimate, but Mr. Taylor left me and my children um, stranded in Florida while he went away to, I guess, chase his dreams. Oh my, these guys have dug the hole for themselves intentionally. Watch out for the deranged plot. He left her behind and she found some other guy to comfort her. But despite the fact of her deceiving him, he gave the baby boy his name. I had no one to turn to but Mr. Green. Mr. Green was the person that was what there Mr. for Green me. what Mr. Green did for he, you. He, I've Mr. been here Taylor taking care of these kids. Mr. Taylor didn't send any money got my last name. Where Mr. Green at? Mr. Taylor didn't send any money while he Why was away. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let me hear you one at a time because I want to understand this. This supposed job opportunity that he had, during this job opportunity, he never sent me or the kids any money. We barely had any contact with him. Further, Mr. Taylor contended that Ms. Jackson got intimate with the other man right after she left. That precipitated the argument, but baby mama got this point as she advocated they would not have been in this situation if the plaintiff had acted mindful. That was what I needed at that so time. So how long after Mr. Taylor left for Atlanta did you turn to Mr. Green? A few weeks. Three days later, she was pregnant by October. October 12th, I left September 14th. That was less than a month. No, That's I a knew, lie. I didn't, I didn't do it right away. The plaintiff stated the facts that made him certain about not fathering the child and said that he was unaware of her being pregnant with someone else's baby till nine months. And then someone on Facebook hit him and dropped the bomb, he is not the father. Learn about this until she was nine months pregnant? Yes, uh... Explain. Well, a guy that was on Facebook, he inboxed me basically telling me that LaJoy was pregnant by Mr. Green. So that was my first time even hearing about it. I confronted her. Now have you talked to her? You've been talking yes. to her on the phone? Yes. And she's never mentioned I'm pregnant. No. So the defendant went out on the emotional lovey-dovey show and stated that she did not tell him because she loves the alleged baby daddy. But the man cut off her show and revealed that Mr. Green was not accepting the child and she is just trying to make him adult. While I was gone and she was pregnant, she was trying to get Ryan the whole time to be with her. Be with me. I want no, to name a baby after honor. you. I, man, I put this on my daughter, man. She, she had a, a Magic Jack app on her phone. When you on Wi-Fi, you could text people. She was texting him. She was, she, she was asking, can I name the baby after you? Who is she texting? Mr. Green. Can I name the baby after you to stand the third? Mr. Green said, no, uh-uh. For better understanding and to create some sense, Judge Lake summoned Mr. Green to the podium and asked about the particular situation. And his testimony favored the baby mama like this. Did have a sexual relationship with Ms. Jackson. Yes, Am I correct? Yes, ma'am, I did. What was the nature of that relationship? I guess I met her in the shelter. And she, and she when I met her, she told me that he had left her for a rap career in Atlanta. Just left and didn't want, want nothing to do with her. Had nothing to do with her. Didn't want to take care of the kids. So I'm the sitting there and I feel there, bad. Right? So I sit there. I sit, feel bad. She got, you know, she got two kids. From cheating to being caught red-handed, it revealed that she got back with the plaintiff as soon as she was kicked out of the Green's house. And instead of repenting the situation, Ms. Jackson continued being a maniac and shouted to her core to prove her points. Being with Mr. Green. Yes, Your Honor. At what point do you go back to Mr. Taylor? When he dropped her. No, he didn't drop me. I left. I left. When he dropped her. No. I left when he dropped her. 
So wait a minute, Mr. Green. Is that you know how you know the story from because from the text you saw clues. on the phone? No, too much clues. I'm, I'm an intelligent person, Your Honor. Oh my! Even though they all knew that every move they played made them one step closer to the chaotic situation, they didn't stop, and it led to someone's baby and gave someone else's surname. Because the real father was the actual deadbeat daddy. You're back now with Mr. Taylor during the pregnancy. Yes, Your Honor. And the child's last name is Taylor. Yes, Your Honor. After she asked him, can she name it Brian Green? And she, well, he wasn't going for it. So you did get a text that asked, oh, can I name the she child? She me down. two years trying to get this. Blow him I haven't, down. I haven't Blow had him any down. contact with him since Blow my son him down. was a I month I old. I put up my Blow Facebook him. right now on message of you trying to ask me to get DNA chat. Stop stunting them. However, their testimony revealed so many secrets one after another, and they made some sort of sense to the paternity conflict. But still, the DNA results were the only way to identify the whole truth. So let's get those results. His biological father is Mr. Green. I figured. That's fine. <laughs> if that's mine, that's good. And I respect you for being there. I was about to say, you got a good child now. Is two dollars and a cigarette worth producing a baby? Ms. Butts arrived in the court holding the paternity dispute, saying she had a brief but heels overhead relationship with Mr. Richardson, who at first acknowledged the paternity of her son, and now when his mom interjected the doubt, they ended up here. Ms. Butts, you say you and Mr. Richardson had a brief but passionate relationship that led to the birth of your son, Quatier. You and your mother contend Mr. Butts originally accepted and embraced your son, but has since become an elusive deadbeat who refuses to acknowledge paternity. Is yes, that Your correct? Honor. Yes, no. Your Honor. So, the trial begins with the mother's testimony. She stated that the defendant is denying the baby because his mother has manipulated him. Meanwhile, the alleged baby daddy told another story that will blow your mind like this. And you intend to prove that today, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Butts, why do you think Mr. Richardson started denying your child? Because Mr. Richardson is a mama's boy. Whatever his mom say, he gonna listen. At the end of the day, my son, he's a father. Today, when we get these test results, he's gonna take care of my child. She's Mr. Lying. Richardson? Yes. However, it was slipped that Mr. Richardson has seen the baby three times only, even though he embraced and admitted the baby during the pregnancy, but he refused the whole mum's story. I think he doesn't even know that no one is entertaining his clowning act. You're saying, Miss but your child needs a father. Yeah, of course. Quadier is three years old. Beautiful little boy. Awesome, amazing. And how many times has Mr. Richardson Look, seen? Right. Three, three times when he was a month old. He's outside, when I, he met me outside. Oh, he my son, he looked just like me. The whole nine months he was his. Oh my, so that's where things went south. During her pregnancy, he got busted. And when he came out, the cheating bombshell dropped on him. He alleged that Ms. Butts was busy with another, and he must be the father. He pregnant the whole nine months he was here. The whole nine months. July 4th, I went and down And during there. this nine months, was he going to doctor's appointments? Was you he coming? This whole, this, during the whole nine, nine months, he was in jail. When do you get in touch with her? You say, I wanna, by, I wanna, by the time you came back, right. what, what part of the scenario were we in? Up next, it was disclosed that he was not there when the baby was born, but after one month, he met him and started to claim that baby waiter is his. And once again, he put on his stupid shirt show of denial and declared the mother is liar. And so when you gave birth, what happened? When I was gave he, birth, did you let him know? Was he there? He wasn't there, not at all. I let, I let him know I gave birth. I brought my son to him well, when my son was a there? month That's not old. My baby. When my I'm son not was a month old, another man's baby. he met me outside. As soon as he see my baby, oh, this is my young boy. He look just like me. This when is my young boy. When did I ever say that? Oh, I can wait right here. You go upstairs. Yeah. Just oh, mom, your grandbaby here. So folks, have you ever seen an exhibit portraying when a woman does not know who the father is, she leaves it blank. To support his claims, he brought some new sort of evidence. Let's peep at his creativity. Mr. Richardson, you brought an exhibit. Yes, I did. Please step over to it and explain it to the court. When a woman doesn't know who the father is, doesn't she leave the birth certificate in blank? And so this is a sample of the birth certificate. Right. And you say when a woman doesn't know who the father is, you leave the father's leave name the blank. blank. In this case, she knows who the father is. It's not my name. It's not so my name. So you're saying she put another man on the birth certificate. Exactly. Mm another man's name on his birth certificate. This is dubious, but no worries as the baby mama explained to the court why she had put the other man's name on the birth certificate. However, yeah, it is obvious. No one wants a deadbeat dad for her baby. That's 
Why is it you deliberately put another man's name on the birth certificate? Because that man I was with, and he took care, like, he didn't take care of me, but he was there for me the whole pregnancy. Doctor's appointment, um, prenatal care, everything. Like, he was there with me through everything. He made sure I was all right during my pregnancy, something he should have been doing. Right. Right. And, he tried to name my, my, like, my son needs a father. Like, but you do understand. I can, I can put him in line. My son won't even know who he is, for real, for real. Yes, it does not sound good from any perception. Baby is now three and she doesn't know who his dad is. But the good part is, mommy played a dual role and is his both parents. Praise her for this, please. And does Quatier say he's his daddy? My son, he, he doesn't have a dad. Like, my son, oh, he said that to me the other day. Like, I don't have a dad, mommy, you're my dad. Like, a three-year-old really came to me and said that, I don't have a dad, mommy, you're my dad. Even though Judge Lauren heard a lot of their testimony, their never-ending disagreements and arguments were making things more complicated. Things were all over and not getting to the point of resolution. So the only way was to get those results. Mr. Richardson, you are the father. Oh, sorry! Oh, sorry! Oh, 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 Look at my hands oh, 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 Just like you. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Do you need my glasses, sir? That's oh, yeah. a twin. <laughs> You he looks just like you. Mm. Thank Aww, you. Oh, where Josh is he? Lakes. Where, is <laughs> where is the baby? Life turned upside down when Mr. Bell dropped a bombshell after 18 years asserting that Ms. Other is not his biological daughter. Determined to establish her parentage, she brought her father to court for a compact proof of her lineage. However, the defendant countered with lunatic allegations that Ms. Mary had bamboozled him. Ms. Others, you claim that Mr. Bell had never doubted he was your father and you were shocked when he recently began denying paternity. Now, you say your life has now been turned upside down and you need the results of today's paternity test to prove your identity. Yes, Your Honor. So, the trial had a dramatic start. It turned out that Mother has already tried to trap him in a paternity mess, and when he believed her, it turned out that the baby was not his. I must say, if that's the case, then the defendant is on point. I'm sorry, Your Honor, I gotta interject, because not once in her 18 years have I ever denied her. Not once. But you're denying her today. You're I've saying that never she may not her. be her father. That is correct. Because of being deceived by her mother. When my daughter was about two years old, she and I became intimate again and she wound up pregnant. So of course I'm being excited, I'm, I'm there for her. Dramatically, it was revealed that he doubts paternity and he wants a DNA test, but the young girl revealed that even for 18 years he did not deny, but still he has not been there for her, so he is nothing but a deadbeat father. Your Honor, I was at McDonald's and he met me up at McDonald's. That's when he said he wants a paternity test and I agreed to it, but it never happened. Well wait, you were up at McDonald's, when you just up mm -hmm. there like a normal teenage and you, here comes your father. However, when the judge asked the supposed father about the false incident played by him. He put on a clown mask and pretended like he had just lost his memory at that moment. But ha, someone please remind him, Judge Lake is in front of him. You admit this McDonald's Day happened? Probably. Probably. I can't recall that. I don't recall that. <laughs> Mr. Bell, if you forget a fact like that, your credibility is shot. No. No. Because that wasn't a topic of conversation when I met her at McDonald's. When we did talk about it, it was not at McDonald's. To clear things up, Ms. Mary stepped up to the podium and alleged that Mr. Bell was already aware that there is the possibility of the other guy being the father, but he didn't let those statements approach him like this. However, he contends that there was another young child born with during your relationship when you were with him that you told him. My son, yes, but he also knew that there was a possibility that there was another man involved. That is not true. Yes, it is. Your Honor. Yes, it is. No. Okay, so when Judge Lauren asked the granny about what type of relationship she has with Ms. Tiana, it revealed that she has no relationship with her. Further, she made some serious allegations against Ms. Mary, but mommy defended them like that. What do you have to add? All I know is that I tried to bond with the baby, the little boy, and when I when I found out that he wasn't my grandson, I was very devastated. I was very devastated. So you're saying this entire situation with the little boy where he feels like your son felt like he was lied yes. to. Yes. The defendant revealed that she went to see her and the bombshell exploded on him and that her daughter is pregnant and she approached him for money after having a baby. But the drama flares up when Mr. Bell claims that Ms. Other called her and said, her daughter is just using him. And I'm all happy seeing him like, hey, her mother touches her stomach. And I'm like, we touching her stomach for her. She was like, she can tell you. I was like, what are you, pregnant? So she was like, oh yeah, you know, well, yeah. A couple days later, she comes down to my job with a baby in her hand. As it is manifest that a child's upbringing is the most basic and vehement right. But in this episode, we can see that this young woman has no respect for her elders, and all of this might be due to the toxic situation she has been in. So whatever happened in their trial, Judge Lauren concluded like that. I have got to say 
something uh, to you, Tiana, because as much as I feel sorry for you, and I could not imagine a young woman having to be in the position you're in and having to deal with this situation. One thing that I continue to see that is really bothering me, and I'm gonna look at your mother too, is you have no respect for older people. You have no respect for your elders. You. However, their to and fro allegations were all over and made things more complicated for the girl. And the parents were busy in their dispute. So the last hope to get closure was to reveal whatever was hiding in the DNA envelope. So let's find out. Mr. Bell, you are not. I knew it! Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! I knew it! I knew it! I told you! I told you! He's a liar! No, he's a liar! And I know who the daddy is. I told you! I told you! I know who the daddy is! Thank you, Thank you so much! Told you, Tiana! Told you! Sleep in joy can make you weep in disgust. As you can see in this case, Mr. Boston dragged the defendant into court saying that he has undeniable proof that there is no possibility of him being the father of this trifling woman. Meanwhile, Ms. Murphy asserted that she is tired of the plaintiff's lies and she wants to stop by conducting a DNA test, moving to the plaintiffs to see to whom the DNA diagnostic will favor. Mr. Boston, you have dragged the defendant into court today because you say you have undeniable proof that there is no way possible that you are the biological father of the defendant's 10-month-old son, Tristan. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, the testimony started with Mr. Boston's evidence, and the evidence was invisible. No one could see that, because his dynamic words were the solid, undeniable proof. I think something hit his mind. His words do not seem trustworthy, as he is just clearly bluffing. Mr. Boston, what is your proof that you are not Tristan's father? Your Honor, you have to have sex to make a baby. And I don't believe in, you know, I don't remember even doing that well. Lies. You He's don't remember lying. having sex with Miss Murphy? He's lying. Well, my he was at my that house that. all the time, every day, every night in my bed. Here, the yes or no game begins. Let's play with them. Ha! The defendant stated that they were in a committed relationship, but the plaintiff tried to blow off the baby mama's testimony with his dumb lies like that. So, Mr. Boston, you say you weren't in a committed yes, we relationship? Were. No. Yes, we were. She didn't turn the friendship into a whole marriage. OMG! Like, for real, really? No. That ain't how it went. Miss Murphy. <laughs> yes, sure. Honor. Oh my, who on earth is this desperate to be intimate with the girl? Man, you were sleeping with her for four months and still did not know her real name? What he is testifying is just crazy or he is naive. Yana, he I rubbed found my out. belly and everything. He was smiling and she everything. She was pregnant in the process of me being no, over no, a family member's house. No. That family member came in the house and told me, well, you know somebody named Teresa at the time? I didn't know her government name. Only thing I knew was He's Boop. lying. He's I knew lying her by the honor. On the procession of trial, it slipped out that Ms. Murphy was busy with another, but she stated the facts of her being certain regarding the baby's parentage. She told the court that when the baby was conceived, she was with Mr. Boston only. Yeah. No. Consistently. Yes. Yeah. Before no. you got no. pregnant, was he the only man you were intimate with no. at all? No. Let her answer. No. No. Okay. So why are you convinced that Mr. Boston is the father? Because for the period of time when I found out I was pregnant, the time adds up. He was the only man that I was No, I was not. With. To clear up the doubts, Judge Lake summoned Mr. Gregory into the court. He contended that they were sexual buddies. And upon getting news about baby mama's pregnancy, he blew everything off and blocked her instantly. I must say this man has got nerves. After his false actions, he is narrating them proudly. We've determined that you, in fact, have had a relationship with Miss Murphy. A yeah, sexual relationship. Just a sexual relationship. Take me back to the day Miss Murphy told you she was pregnant. She texted me on Facebook and told me she was pregnant. I never talked to her again. Like, deleted faith, deleted, deleted everything. <laughs> So I, I blocked her. So I blocked her. So I blocked her. You got a message on Facebook that she was potentially pregnant by you and you deleted her? Blocked it. He blocked me. However, the witness rolled up to the podium and testified in her best friend's favor. She asserted that she also knows that Mr. Boston is the father and he is just making up stories to avoid the situation. Who do you believe is Tristan's biological father? Mr. Boston. <laughs> and why is I, that? Yana, I stayed with... I was living with Teresa the whole time. So when he was saying he wasn't really coming over there that he much... Was. Right, he was. And he was sleeping on the floor. He, he was sleeping, sleeping in my floor. bed. Was Mr. Boston the only man coming over there within that four month period? When when she was saying when she was saying him, he was the only man. Hmm. 
Things were out of control as the baby mama didn't even know who the baby daddy was. Their non-serious back and forth statements made Judge Lake ferocious and she gave the reality check to these adults like this. You're responsible if you know you slept with more than one man during the window of conception. It is your responsibility to figure out who that child's father is. And before you wrote somebody arbitrarily into child support without knowing he's the father, to just figure out that issue. You know both of these men could be that child's father. And men, you're not off the hook. So don't think just because I am empowering this young woman to understand what she should have done, you all are not off the hook. Their ongoing discussion further fuels the whole situation instead of helping to resolve the case. But it was quite evident that they needed to know the results for the baby and his biological father needed to be a man up. So let's go get those results and see what envelope is hiding in it. Mr. Gregory, you are not his father. The next results read as follows. Mr. Boston, you are not the father. Ms. Murphy, do you know who this child's father is? Thank you for the truth. Because you can't get anywhere till you tell the truth. As you come of age and get older, you're going to learn that sometimes you just got to put your big girl panties on. In this paternity court episode, Mr. Lang brought his wife to the dock for the alleged infidelity done with his best friend from the sandbox. But the mommy refuses to play along with such nasty accusations. It looks like both parties are at polar ends. Good cause, it calls for drama. Here is how the session went. Now, Ms. Lang, I'm going to start with you. Why are you so certain this child isn't your son's? Because I found out that Miss Brown slept with my son's best friend from the sandbox best friend. And uh, I don't think you know whether it's my son's or Mr. Dixon's. Mm. But the twist is that she wasn't the only one to blame. It could have been that another potential father was using baby mama to pull up revenge on Mr. Lang because they were best friends. And wait for it, news flash. Mr. Lang had cheated with 50 to 100 girls, so now you know that daddy isn't innocent either. Mr. Lang, when you found out she was pregnant, you were happy about it. Yes, ma'am. Did you have any doubts at that time? Not at that time, no, I didn't. And what made you start to have doubts? When, Miss, when Mr. Dixon got in the picture, and he had told me to stop messing with her because the, the baby she's pregnant with could possibly be hit. Oh. Oh, so Leaving she informs mail. you that she's having a baby and you're the father and you are happy about it. Yes. Then you get a phone call from Mr. Dixon. Mm. Well, Mr. Dixon sure knows when to make a phone call. Plus, adding more to this mix, the grandma also jumped with her chocho of, it's not your baby. Although Miss Rounds claimed to be sleeping with only Mr. Lang, her man was not ready to trust baby mama's words. Did or did not sleep with this best I friend? I did not. Okay. And I am very sure that this is his baby and we spoke about it. I haven't slept together with no one else. And exactly that time is around the exact time I got pregnant. You say that's your that window in, of conception? Yes, that was in middle August, end of August. And so now the baby's born? Yeah. Mr. Lang was there when yes. the baby was born? Yes, he was there and the so whole time. He signed the birth certificate? Yes, yeah. he did. After this, the defendant pointed out the real reason behind the denial. Well, it was the meddling mother of the potential biological father and her unwanted interference in the relationship. The baby mama even had proof of it. Was that even necessary? Every time me and him would have an argument about him cheating, his mother would get into it, either try to argue with me or try to lie for her son, which she can, I don't doubt, but don't be in my face telling me a lie. Just go go away with your son. Like, don't get on Facebook talking mess. She'll get on Facebook, oh, that giraffe, I don't like her. Like, girl, like, I don't know, I can't explain it. She would always get into it. She, she called you a giraffe. Never. Anyways, to end this drama without getting sidetracked from the main theme, it was clear that a child was stuck in the midst of grown-up drama, which was unfair. But hey, this is where the paternity court steps in. Let's see what the envelope holds. Mr. Lang. You are not oh! the father. Are you serious? That's a lie. <laughs> oh that is a God. lie. <laughs> I oh boy, I bet you didn't see that coming. Well, that walk from the dock to the waiting room has been the longest road in this woman's life. However, we also felt bad for the guy who so far was busy playing daddy. If Mr. Lang is not the father, who is baby Janelle's father? It's a lie, I know he is. <laughs> no, it's not Mr. Lane. <laughs> Mr. Hodges was stuck with the same question. If he was or was not the father of the defendant's one-month-old daughter, and if you are thinking, why was there doubt in the first place? It turns out that Mr. Plaintiff had caught his girlfriend cheating, broken over such a revelation. He chose to begin like this. Cheated on me and I caught her with multiple guys. She had one hidden in the room, and whenever we first got together, she said that she would never hurt me or cheat on me. She would be truthful, and yet she's lied to me left and right. Miss Willard, you kept lying and you kept cheating? 
Um, no, I did not. I had a guy over at my house, yes. He was visiting because he was a childhood friend. That is a major no right from the start, because the baby daddy testified that his woman was fast, as right into days of meeting up if they got all cozy up. And we know, man, they might run after with these flags, but they don't parade around with them. No, we are not aggregating, and the defendant had been cooking this at her place. Miss Blevins, I understand that you are the one who pushed your son to open this case. Yes, Your Honor. And why did you do that? Um, because I knew that she had been cheating on him. He had caught her with another guy that she said was a friend, but yet he was hidden in her house when he, when my son got there. You found him hiding in the house? Yes, Your Honor. Hiding in the house where? In her mother's bedroom. Her mother also has her hands in the dirt. At this moment, the court appeared to be persuaded that Mr. Hodges was correct. But wait, even though the alleged knew that Miss Willard was loose as a goose, Mr. Hodges got engaged to the defendant. When they got engaged that my son didn't know about. So you were engaged to Mr. Hodges, but you were married to another guy at the time? Yes, Your Honor. I feel like he has been deceived and took advantage of. What was your first impression when you met Ms. Willard? What did you think? I thought she was sneaky. She always kept her phone on her. She um, never let him get a hold of it. And when she was on it and he would come around, she would hide. An endless flow of tricky moves. What's going on? However, the young baby daddy's mother jumped in for the rescue and told her that the defendant double-timed her son. The potential bubby even had brought text evidence to prove her testimony. But the other grandma wasn't ready to back down either. Watch how she gets down. Were you dating this man and Mr. Hodges at the same time? No, Your Honor. Your Honor. So why is this man saying this? He's given all these specific details to Miss Blevin. He was at the hospital when Lillian was born. Yes, I was with him at that time. Your Honor, he's Your Honor, he's saying that. He's saying that because he wants my daughter. I've been through it with this person when I think it's in February, right after Christmas sometime, when she she didn't even know she was pregnant at that time. She left my house. Suppose there wasn't enough lying already. The defendant has also hidden a baby at this point that she had before meeting Mr. Hodges. Despite all this, the climax arrives when the defendant also conceals the birth of a one month old daughter from Mr. Hodges. What a train wreck. This is too much lying. I know. <laughs> this is this is just too much lying. Now I heard about five lies already. What is going on? Why are you texting him like he, the baby isn't born when the baby is born. Okay, he's married now, and I just didn't want to break up a marriage when he found out he had a kid by another person. Um, that's, that's it. She... But you told him, I'm pregnant eight months. Regardless of every hard reality, Mr. Hodges is faced by the defendant when asked how he feels after also developing a bond with the beautiful baby. He sounded shattered with enough proof on the table. There is no stopping this DNA conclusion. The case of Hodges versus Willard. When it comes to one month old Lillian Willard, Mr. Hodges, you are the father. We have the answer, we need it. And it was actually the answer all of you wanted. You okay, honey? Yeah, I'm fine. I want to meet with you both in my chambers. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Honor. Court is adjourned. Infertility and infidelity both had convinced Mr. Ball that he was not the father of Miss Cox's three-year-old daughter with multiple men on the paternity list. The plaintiff refuses to play along with the mind games of his ex-girlfriend. Sounds messy, right? All right, now, Mr. Ball, how did you first hear that Miss Cox was sleeping with multiple men? Well, during the time of my incarceration, Your Honor, you know, I was, we were talking every day, you know, morning, noon, night, we would talk every day, and maybe within uh, the last 90 days of me, you know, serving my time, I was getting letters from her best friend stating to me that she was sleeping with other men, going out with other men, and that everything wasn't, you know, what I was being told. It wasn't what it seemed. Okay, so the girlfriend's best friend's claims caused a stir in the allegations. This was refuted by the defendant, who disclosed that Mr. Ball was certain about her loyalties before meeting the other man at the grocery store. Whoa. And so hold on, Miss Cox, I need to clarify. While he was away, were you in a relationship with another man? We wasn't, we was in a physical relationship. It wasn't like we weren't together, well, nothing like that. Sexual relationship. And he knew about this. Once did I, you tell no, Mr. Ball? No, no. Yes, I did. I wrote no. him a letter and I told him everything that no. was going on. And he wrote back and still agreed to come home to me after no. hearing everything as long as everything was put to a stop. What just happened? He was tipped by the mother of his child, who happens to be the best friend we all have heard about. Now I'm also thinking that the dad got played, but the plaintiff, because there was some obscene evidence in the situation. Grabbing pictures off of our computer and I pull up a picture, not not one picture, multiple pictures. He knew about the 
guy. of her, and not only just that guy, another guy, no, and another guy. guy. And I asked her about guy. it. So let me ask you this: What was in the picture? Her arms around guys, kissing around guys. No, it and wasn't I'm no asking. pictures like that. And the pictures were deleted. They were in the recycling no, bin. I he was them. looking for a reason to argue. Them. It is now clear that Mr. Ball was cheating with the defendant's best friend. Something we all suspected. It turns out that the suspect was a deadbeat who was cheating on the baby mama right under her roof and was now trying to play the victim under the situation. Live right. with me. I took care you. of her because he was too lazy to get up, up off of his butt oh. to go and get a job. So when I first his... came home, I wasn't looking for a job. When yeah. I was with her, when we were looking for a job, she was sitting right outside the place texting a dude. One place. Sitting one down there texting him. application. And, and with because you, I was texting just another you, guy, because you, I was texting another you, guy the same while he was guy. in the place filling out a job application, guy. that was but his excuse to stop looking for a job. Well, ain't that overwhelming? Up next, when the judge asked Mr. Ball to participate in the birth of the daughter, the defendant responded, yes. According to Ms. Cox, he refused to sign the birth certificate and even denied a DNA test. It looks like Mr. Lazy Bones was genuinely avoiding the responsibility. Ms. Cox, when your daughter Gabrielle Gabby was born, was Mr. Ball there? Yes, ma'am, he was. Yes, ma'am, he did. My water broke February 10, 2010 during intercourse with Mr. Ball, and um, he drove me to the hospital. He was there the whole three days I was in the hospital. He drove me home from the hospital, and we stayed with him. He never expressed to me in the hospital that he had doubt or anything. These are pictures of him and me and, and, and my daughter Gabby at the hospital after she was born. Another fact was revealed that while Mr. Balls was engaged to another woman, he was still fooling with the mommy at the podium. Wow, that's a good way to not have a baby with someone you don't trust. Oh, and the fiance part. Good luck explaining this to her man. It's never about my child. It's always about me because we were just sleeping together a week ago. A week ago? What? Yeah, a week ago. A we week were just ago? at your mother's house sleeping together a week ago. A week ago? Wait, Wait a minute. Where were we not, Miss Montgomery? At her mother's house? At his mother's house, a yes. A week ago? A week ago? A week ago, yes. You were at his mother's a house? A week ago, no. Yes. No. We were. Yes, no. we were. A After, week ago. A week ago. No. Might have been like nine days ago. No. A week and a half ago. No. During Mr. That Ball. Time, it was not nine days ago, Your Honor. That is a harsh disgrace on Mr. Ball. It appears as though he was staying away from liability and was taking advantage of Ms. Cox, no matter how much you tried to manipulate your way out. Truth always finds its way. Comes to three-year-old Gabrielle. It has been determined that Mr. Ball, you are her father. <laughs> news you wanted? Yes. So understand this. Whatever the doubt, that excuse is gone. And you're her daddy, her father, and she's counting on you. Brother, Have you, you found something? a job yet? Ms. Whitman was in front of Judge Lake with her no-shame attitude, claiming that there was no way that the defendant could be the father of her one-month-old daughter. With both men warped around this mommy's fingers, the trial proceeded like this. Well, me and Ms. Mr. Mitchell met at a bus station when I was coming from Chicago to Arkansas. And we kind of like kicked it off quick and became girlfriend and boyfriend. And two months into relationship, I met Mr. Anderson. And we were pretty much like friends. And because I thought Mr. Mitchell was cheating. I kind of went to him and we were texting. And, and you, so then you start giving Mr. Anderson a little bit more attention. Well, that is just bizarre, cheating on someone you love based on speculations. It was clear that Ms. Whitman needed to reconsider her life choice because she was now stuck in one of the messiest paternity confusion. Well, yeah, explain I, yes. to the court. Look, we are all, this is a small town. A small town, everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows who drives what. This particular person I know stayed with her a week. Really? And you know who this guy is. I know him. He's one of my cousins. So one of your cousins stayed up there with her for a week? Yes. Did your cousin tell you that he slept with her? Yes, yeah, we even gave each other daps and everything. <laughs> The woman had the same jingle playing, you know, bluntly refusing everything. So, well, let's skip to the pregnancy test part. Turns out that, although she sent pictures of her pregnancy test to both Mr. Mapson and Mr. Anderson, just in two weeks, she changed her mind. Did you have any idea that she was sleeping with other people? I kind of had suspicions because of our relationship. It was a long distance relationship. And after a while, you know how long distance relationship is. Did you show up to the hospital and participate in the birth with her? At first, my attention was well to show up at the hospital, but just knowing that it could have been somebody else's kid, I didn't want to just involve myself. With both fathers in denial, someone had to take responsibility for the child. Anyway, Mr. Anderson was not ready to play along at all, as the existence of the child was running his current relationship. Still, no one was ready to pay for the test. I went through the whole birth alone, the whole nine months. He even he even stopped talking to me, and I couldn't I couldn't get a hold of Mr. Anderson because he blocked all communication, Facebook, telephone, yeah, and did. he stopped answering the phone 
off when we missed the map. The reason I blocked her off because of the stuff she was doing on Facebook. She was, you know what I'm saying, just out there just saying, this is my baby daddy, knowing she been with us. I've people. never put on Facebook you know that you're my baby she, daddy. That is toxic. Compromise on her daughter's right to know who the father is. Which mother does that? Upon the judge asking Ms. Whitman if there is any chance that someone else might be the father, she further escalates the doubts like this. So you are positive. Yes, Your Honor. That there is absolutely no other possibility, no other man besides these two could be the father of your child. That's right, Your Honor. There's one. There's no, there's not. You, you agree with Mr. Anderson, Mr. Mapson? You believe I'm there's just, a third? All I know is about Mr. Anderson. I don't know nothing about nobody. There's else. no one else. People, That's I was me. texting people. People might have come over. You heard her. There was another person who stayed over for a week. See, we told you no shame for her game. This made the judge more suspicious, and she finally had to pull the trigger by calling in for the result, which went like this. As to whether Mr. Mapson or Mr. Anderson is the biological father of one-month-old Michaela. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Anderson, you are not her father. Mr. Mapson, you are her father. Can I come up and shake his hand? He'd like to shake your like hand. It. 